listen, stop. I'm saying to myself right now, he said, sometimes I wonder this new feeling that I'm possessing right now, is it um, a real feeling? Does this stuff really help? Or am I lying to myself again till the next moment, till the next feeling come to do some drugs or to be with somebody else? What's really going on? Is that feeling going to come back? Oh, Jake, did you see Mike Tyson no, uh, no, dropping no, 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 his no. sparring I was, partner? I was talking about, yeah, I fucking I saw was it. Talking about no, the, I saw I was, it. And I don't give a f Sure, he's looking good. Sure, he's looking all of that. Oh, he's dropping people. He's fast. So the f am I. People want the truth. I don't think people want you to kill Mike Tyson. Okay, okay. In a shocking twist leading up to the highly anticipated fight between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, rumors have circulated that Tyson may be using steroids to prepare for the match. The speculation began after some boxing analysts and experts noticed Tyson's unusually intense physique and training stamina, which is notable even by his high standards. Known for his natural power, and intense dedication to training, Tyson's recent return to the ring at age 58 has many in the boxing world speculating on whether he's resorting to enhancements to keep up with younger fighters like Paul. I'm not against steroids and none of that stuff, right? Because everybody's using it, right? But it shouldn't be used in sports where people are physically fighting. The rumors were initially sparked by a series of leaked training videos showing Tyson in top shape with an unusual level of speed and power for a fighter his age. Some experts began raising questions about whether this could be achieved naturally given Tyson's previous injuries and his age. PEDs, such as anabolic steroids, are known to help with muscle recovery and endurance, factors that could significantly benefit Tyson as he ramps up his training to fight the younger, stronger Paul. Mike Tyson is a legend in the boxing world, and any confirmation of steroid use would undoubtedly tarnish his legacy. Throughout his career, Tyson has been respected for his raw, natural strength and relentless fighting spirit. Even in his late 50s, he's made maintained a reputation for maintaining rigorous standards in the gym. However, if the rumors are true, it could alter how fans perceive his comeback as well as his enduring image as a boxer who relies on his natural abilities. For Jake Paul, the news is equally controversial. Paul, who is relatively new to the sport compared to Tyson, has built his brand on hard work and discipline, often using his intense training videos to show that he's taking the sport seriously. Facing an opponent allegedly using PEDs would likely sour the fight's competitive integrity and could cause Paul's team to raise concerns about the fairness of the matchup. Several prominent boxing analysts and commentators have weighed in on the controversy. Some argue that PEDs are more common than fans realize in the modern boxing landscape, while others emphasize the importance of maintaining a clean sport. Experts in Tyson's corner are quick to defend the boxing icon, arguing that his regimen is simply a result of dedication and an exceptionally high pain tolerance honed over years of training. Others aren't convinced, noting that the physical demands of the sport make it tempting for older fighters to turn to substances that enhance their recovery and performance. My main objective and everything I've been embarking on and been um, involving myself with has all been because of a fresh start. I feel fresh. I feel new. I feel that nothing could stop me. Nothing could be in my way. And it's just an awesome feeling. So this is from doing that one DMT experience just sent you into... Well, I did, only, I did it person. one time, but I did it many, uh, many times that day. Right, <laughs> right. You know, but yeah, this really, um, I don't know what it is. While Tyson has never openly admitted to using steroids, he has been candid about other aspects of his lifestyle, including his experimentation with recreational substances. However, Tyson has consistently stated that he has stayed away from performance-enhancing substances in the past, relying instead on his raw strength and disciplined training. That said, the spotlight is now on his team to clarify whether the boxer is truly keeping things natural in the lead-up to this highly publicized fight. Jake Paul's team has reportedly been cautious about making any public accusations but has stated that they will be closely monitoring the situation. Paul himself has expressed his respect for Tyson's legacy, yet the rumors have created an underlying tension in what was already a high-stakes matchup. If Tyson is indeed using PEDs, it could affect Paul's decision on whether or not to continue with the fight, depending on his team's evaluation of the potential risks and Involved. The boxing commission overseeing the fight may need to take action to clear up the allegations. Generally, major fights require pre-fight testing to ensure that all fighters are clean, and it's likely that both Tyson and Paul will undergo testing closer to fight day. Still, some fans are concerned that testing might be circumvented or that the results could be inconclusive if Tyson has been using masking agents to hide any PED use. The rumors have introduced a new layer of drama to the upcoming fight. If Tyson is found to be using PEDs, he could face 
face penalties, ranging from fines to disqualification, depending on the rules of the governing body. This could also lead to a delay in the match or, in extreme cases, the fight being called off entirely if one side sees the terms as unfair. Meanwhile, Mike Tyson's autobiography, Undisputed Truth, revealed astonishing insights and revelations from the life of the legendary retired boxer. According to John Swain of The Telegraph, Tyson participated in several of his significant bouts under the influence of substances, employing drastic tactics to evade detection for these illegal substances. Starting with the fighter's devastating defeat to Danny Williams in 2004, Swain chronicles some of the more impactful passages in Tyson's memoir. I was a full-blown coquette, wrote Tyson, who admitted to using the substance until shortly before the bout began. Tyson reveals that his journey with substance use began early, having experimented with cocaine at just 11 years old, while his introduction to drinks came even earlier, during his infancy. These early encounters seemed to lay the groundwork for his ongoing struggles with these vices. Then there was the method Tyson used to avoid testing positive for substances, per Swain. Tyson said that he was high before taking to the ring for a match against Lou Savarese in Glasgow in June 2000, and came up with an ingenious method to prevent detection by the sport's official testers. Confessing he had taken blow and pot before the bout, he said, I had to use my wizard, which was a fake piece where you put in someone's clean urine to pass your test. He blamed a $200,000 fine for testing positive for marijuana after a 2000 fight against Andrew Galata in Detroit on the fact that he was tested before having a chance to get the wizard from a member of his team, whom he claims typically carried the device from fight to fight. In January 2002, ahead of his highly anticipated bout with Lennox Lewis, Tyson found himself in a chaotic altercation. He attributed his erratic behavior, which shockingly included sinking his teeth into one of Lewis's legs, to his struggles with substances. Tyson said, I lost my mind. I looked over at him and wanted to hit the mother. Despite seeming to have overcome his struggles, after years of rehabilitation. The 47-year-old Tyson admitted in August that he had come perilously close to death because of his alcoholism, confessing that he had been untruthful about his sobriety. Tyson's experience of the fast life began to take its toll in 1989 during his first encounter with Frank Bruno. Reflecting on that fight, Tyson admitted he was in such poor condition that Bruno had every chance to claim victory. Despite this, Tyson pulled through, securing a win by TKO in the fifth round. On the other hand, we know that Mike Tyson has shared video demonstrating that he still possesses impressive punching power. This presents an opportunity to explore his healing process, possibly involving cutting-edge experimental techniques. Tyson is actively endorsing synthetic testosterone and related products aimed at addressing low testosterone levels through a collaboration with Ocenture, a Florida-based firm. The items marketed through this partnership are classified as performance-enhancing substances and are prohibited by both the World Anti-Doping Agency and the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation the body responsible for regulating combat sports in Texas. Tyson has undergone treatment involving exosomes, cellular particles rich in proteins, as reported by VEDA, utilized in a non-FDA-approved therapy aimed at promoting recovery. Brad Rowe, who trained Tyson for his exhibition match against Roy Jones Jr. in 2020, revealed that Tyson has also employed various biohacking methods, including stem cell therapy, electrostimulation, and sessions in a hyperbaric chamber to tackle his health concerns. Tyson and Paul will undergo random testing on the day of their fight, as mandated by Texas regulations for all participants in a sanctioned professional match. Should the winner be found to have used a prohibited substance, the result will be altered to no decision, nullifying the victory. Mr. Tyson is not and has not been using any medical treatment that would be banned under the Texas Commission, Tyson's publicist, Joe Mignano, told USA Today Sports by email. She provided no further comment. In April, shortly after the announcement of the Tyson-Paul fight, a press release highlighted Tyson's involvement in offering treatments for men dealing with low testosterone. Tyson mentioned his experience with hormone therapy as a pivotal factor in establishing Iron Remedy MD, a virtual clinical practice detailed in the release. I want men everywhere to know Iron Remedy MD has the solutions to help you be the best version of yourself, he said in the press release. Roe, Tyson's trainer, revealed that the boxer had sought medical advice regarding testosterone therapy. He noted that Tyson discontinued the treatments when he started preparing for his his exhibition match against Jones in 2020 to prevent testing positive for synthetic testosterone. Given that the exhibition was held in California, Tyson was subject to mandatory testing prior to the bout. Tyson's commercial collaboration promotes synthetic testosterone, an anabolic steroid. TDLR's list of prohibited substances includes anabolic steroids. It's unclear if Tyson's injection of proteins would result in a positive test. These are proteins derived from placenta and umbilical cord, and there will be
will be growth factors in these products, some of which may be prohibited, Vadas Macchio said. According to Oliver Catlin, president of the Anti-Doping Sciences Institute and Banned Substances Control Group, identifying the illicit use of growth factors remains one of the weakest areas of anti-doping. A key part of Texas rules states the administration or use of any drugs, alcohol, stimulants or injections in any part of the body, either before or during about to or by a contestant, is prohibited unless a substance is prescribed, administered, or authorized by a licensed physician, and the executive director authorizes the contestant to use the drug. According to Telemange, the communications manager for TDLR, fighters may seek therapeutic use exemptions when a medical condition necessitates medication that falls under the category of banned substances. However, she noted that due to HIPAA privacy regulations, the TDLR cannot disclose any information concerning TUs related to Tyson or Paul. But Mange also said, use of any pharmacological substance that is not approved for human therapeutic use is prohibited. A positive test could lead to a 90-day suspension and potential fines. However, this outcome wouldn't endanger the fight, as the lab results aren't typically available right away. In August 2022, Tyson was seen in a wheelchair at Miami International Airport. He later revealed that he was experiencing sciatica, a nerve condition that causes pain, inflammation, and numbness in the affected leg, as detailed by the Mayo Clinic. And when it flares up, I can't even talk, Tyson told Newsmax TV. Less than a year later, Tyson said he was pain-free. He discussed his recovery on an episode of his podcast that featured Abhinav Gautam, an anesthesiologist in Miami, who treated Tyson and whom the boxer called a pain reliever extraordinaire. Roe, who worked with Tyson in 2020, stated that he wouldn't be shocked if the boxer had contact with another person. Mike has access to an amazing specialist in the bio biohacking world that can facilitate healing faster, Roe said. According to Roe, biohacking encompasses a diverse array of practices, such as the experimental peptide BPC-157, which is prohibited by VADA, along with numerous other banned interventions. This category also includes the amino acid glutamine, intermittent fasting, and the use of stem cells. In addition to recovering from the ulcer flare-up, Tyson, who is 58 years old, must likely be healthy enough overall to enter the ring for the battle. Roe said it will have happen. Too much money to be made on both sides. In an episode of the Hot Boxing Podcast, Mike Tyson shared his views on the contentious topics of steroid use and glove tampering within the boxing world. While he expressed no objection to athletes in other sports enhancing their performance with steroids, Tyson took a strong stance against such practices in boxing, a sport centered around direct physical combat. The legendary fighter condemned the use of steroids and any form of tampering, labeling them as criminal acts in the ring. After a quick exchange regarding jean Pascal. Pascal's positive test for four different steroids in advance of his fight with Badu Jack. The topic shifted. Badu the Ripper. Jack echoed Mike Tyson's views on the rampant misuse of steroids and the manipulation of integrity within the sport. Jack said in agreement, you risk your life. You could die in the ring. I'm not against steroids or none of that stuff because everybody's using it right. But it shouldn't be used in sports where people are physically fighting. If you want to run fast or swim faster, anything except physical confrontation. But Tyson said, it's criminal. You're going to hit a man. That's attempted murder. Meanwhile, in a recent interview, Mike Tyson expressed his fury, delivering a harsh warning to Jake Paul over his threats. Tyson seems to have overcome his summer health scare as he has been training consistently and now looks to be in top form. There's some athletes you have to protect them from themselves because they would rather die than quit. So that answers the question, yeah. That's really good. In stark contrast, Paul has been seen in public with a noticeably large belly. In a recent video, Paul reflects on a jab Tyson made at him during their summer press conference, where Tyson remarked that Paul was fat and past his prime. While casually snacking on fried chicken, Paul refutes the claim, asserting that he's not fat. He's simply preparing for a heavyweight clash. New PR, 500 pounds. I'm the strongest heavyweight in existence. No spot. Let's go, Let's go, man. Let's go, Let's go man. 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 This is it. It's obvious that it's all a performance. Paul is wearing a fat suit as part of a marketing ploy, and his real motives remain a mystery. Nobody believes that this is his actual physique. He's probably concealing his current muscle mass to keep Tyson guessing. While it may not be making a significant impact, it's certainly generating buzz on social media. Tyson displays an unwavering focus on the upcoming fight. Even during their face-off at AT&T Stadium just before a Dallas Cowboys game, he stayed entirely serious, fully engaged, and undeterred by the surrounding spectacle. 
Michael. At the age of 58, Mike Tyson is making a return to the ring after nearly two decades away, set to face 27-year-old Paul on November 15th. This matchup has ignited fierce discussions among analysts. Some believe Paul possesses the strength to overwhelm Tyson, while others point to the veteran's wealth of experience and unwavering professionalism as decisive advantages. Although there are worries that Tyson's health could hinder the fight, Iron Mike seems to be growing more confident as the eagerly awaited showdown approaches. I don't know if he's in his prime, he's fat. He should be lean and mean, he's fat and funky. I saw him with his shirt off the other day, he's fat. I thought, did you start training already? Buster Douglas was fat, am I right? I know, but you're no Buster Douglas. He's not gonna win. He can't even knock out Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz is 40 pounds. While Paul may be the clear favorite to defeat Tyson at AT&T Stadium, Tyson's confidence is steadily growing. His momentum is gaining strength, bolstered by rigorous training sessions and an engaging conversation with late-night host Jimmy Kimmel. In a recent Jimmy Kimmel Live, Kimmel acknowledged that he is betting on Tyson to beat Paul and is even thinking about betting on the renowned Iron Mike. That's a good idea, replied Tyson, amused, while Kimmel said he was surprised that Paul was the betting favorite over one of the most formidable boxers of his time. You are Mike Tyson. Tyson, and he isn't, Kimmel said. Tyson seems to have triumphed over the ulcer flare-up that led to the postponement of his match with Paul until November. Although he recently raised concerns among fans by acknowledging that walking has been a struggle during his training, Tyson remains self-assured in his capabilities. He has also expressed admiration for Paul's achievements in the boxing arena. With Paul likely on the verge of retiring from the sport after facing Tyson, an epic showdown approaches, each fighter convinced that the win is destined to be theirs. The upcoming fight between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson has captured widespread interest, merging a sense of nostalgia with a host of apprehensions. Since the announcement, it has been front-page news, sparking conversations among fans who are concerned about the former heavyweight champion's recent health struggles. Detractors have pointed out the significant mismatch in this matchup, emphasizing the different phases of their careers. While the problem child is entering his prime, Iron Mike carries a rich legacy from the past. This disparity prompts a troubling question for many loyal fans. Is Tyson likely to to be outmatched in this fight? The match, postponed due to medical concerns involving the former heavyweight champion, has sparked considerable criticism within the boxing community. Detractors label it dangerous, highlighting Tyson's long absence from the ring and the alarming 30-year age gap between the competitors. Despite these concerns, Iron Mike has dismissed the apprehensions, sharing training camp videos that showcase the powerful punches that once defined his career. Day two, we're getting ready for you. <laughs> During a discussion with Seconds Out, Teddy Atlas, a seasoned analyst and former coach who guided Tyson in his early days, remarked that although the 58-year-old looks remarkable while training on the pads, he warned that stepping into the ring entails a completely different set of challenges. Teddy Atlas said, I'm always going to shoot it down the middle whether you like it or not. It's one thing to hit someone when ain't no one hitting back. When you're a certain athlete, when you have those quick twitch muscles, when you're of a certain stature that the ordinary person will never realize, you could be a baseball player at 58 and get in a batting cage, what do you think the guy's gonna look like? He's gonna look pretty good. That can be deceiving. Atlas further added, yeah, it looks great. And yeah, he can still punch. Your reflexes will go with time. Your speed will be eroded with time. Your timing will go out the window with time. But power, power will always stay there. All I'm saying is that when you see those videos, I would expect him to be able to do that because he was that elite of a talent. According to Atlas, if Tyson lives, Paul's youth will take over the fight, but he will likely be dangerous in the first two rounds. Atlas said, if it's legitimate, if it's not pre arranged. Yeah, the first couple minutes could be a little risky for Paul against a guy who was the youngest heavyweight champ and a guy with one of the greatest combinations of speed and power in the history of the heavyweight division. He added, for one or two rounds, could it be a little hairy? Yeah, if you don't catch him or you don't hurt him, then the gas tank starts to putter. If that happens, then the young man would have the advantage, even a young man who's far less accomplished in the game. Serious concerns are being raised about the upcoming clash between boxing legend Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, with critics suggesting it could profound 
profoundly impact the sport. As anxieties about Tyson's well-being grow alongside the potential dangers of the match, former champions have issued warning statements emphasizing the need for caution. Pauli Malinaji, a former world champion, has voiced his apprehensions about the forthcoming fight. He warns that should Jake Paul cause serious harm to Tyson, it could lead to a considerable public outcry and revive debates surrounding the potential prohibition of boxing. Head blows from young, strong guys at Mike's age aren't good, Malinaji told Canada Casino. He added, when you're older, your body isn't made for that kind of damage anymore. If something goes wrong, people might start calling for the sport to be banned. Before the bout, Tyson, who is now 58 years old, voiced concerns about his health, admitting that he struggles with mobility after training sessions. Despite these issues, he remains resolute about stepping into the ring and plans to undergo a medical assessment to determine his fitness for the fight. However, many are questioning the wisdom of allowing a fighter of Tyson's age to compete against a much younger and tougher opponent like Paul. Malinaji emphasized the risks, pointing out that Paul has been training diligently over the last five years even though he may not be a professional boxer. Jake Paul might not be world-class, but he's certainly not a novice. Hitting someone Tyson's age has serious risks. Tyson wasn't taking punches well at 36, let alone now, Malinaji added. Ken Shamrock, an esteemed inductee of the UFC Hall of Fame, shared his concerns, warning that a win for Paul could have lasting repercussions for the sport. He likened a potential triumph for Paul over Tyson to the end of an era in boxing, especially given Tyson's legendary status and significant impact on the sport. The impending match is set to be a pivotal event, but it also raises significant worries about the well-being of seasoned boxers and the future trajectory of the sport. Should Tyson suffer a serious injury, it might spark a wider dialogue about the responsibility of the sport to protect its athletes and whether these types of fights should even be permitted. This matchup has ignited significant debate among both fans and analysts. Concerns regarding Tyson's age have led to changes in the fight's regulations. Furthermore, the event was originally scheduled for July, but was postponed due to a resurgence of ulcers troubling the former heavyweight champion. His upbeat interview on The Jimmy Kimmel Show, when he was asked pointed questions about the impending fight that will only be available to stream on Netflix, suggests that he is managing the strain with ease. Well, not really, Tyson told Jimmy Kimmel on whether he's used substances recently. He added, I have smoked, but not anytime soon. I'm gonna be so high off life. Tyson then joked about being high in the ring when pressed by Kimmel on his love of substance by adding, that's a possibility too. Iron Mike Tyson is regarded as one of the fiercest fighters in the annals of boxing history, celebrated for his intimidating demeanor, sculpted physique, and incredible knockout prowess. Out of his impressive 50 wins, an astonishing 44 came by way of knockout, solidifying his reputation and leaving an enduring legacy as a formidable force in the sport. At 28, Paul is preparing to face a tough adversary in what he expects to be his second most demanding match, just behind his 2023 clash with Tommy Fury. He knows that when he enters the ring this time, he'll be up against a Tyson who is not only in excellent shape, but also exhibits a high level of professionalism. Super healthy behind the scenes and feeling great, Paul said of Tyson previously to TMZ Sports. He added, a pro fight means war, and I don't take it lightly. You can get seriously hurt or injured in there, so if you're not in there to go to war, then you should just get out. Many fans and commentators speculate that Tyson's return to the ring after more than 20 years away is primarily motivated by a desire for financial gain. However, the iconic boxer has firmly asserted that monetary rewards are not his driving force. At 58, Tyson wrapped up his remarkable boxing career in 2005, cementing his status as one of the greatest heavyweights in the history of the sport. Since that time, he has participated in exhibition matches, but his upcoming bout with 31-year-old Jake Paul marks his re-entry into the professional arena. This development has led many fans to voice their worries regarding Tyson's decision to compete at his age, fueling widespread speculation that financial motives may be the primary reason behind his choice. In response to the allegations, Tyson firmly dismissed the idea that financial profit is his primary motivation for the fight, emphasizing that his decision to confront Paul is rooted in a profound urge to challenge himself and explore his own boundaries. Tyson said, that's for me. I'm a man. I want to go out there and expose myself to risk. Sometimes I want to see who I really am. I want to see what I'm really made of. I want to perform in front of the world. This fight is not going to change my life financially enough. This is just what I want to do. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.